What I'm going to do now is I'm going to mark out where the uh, the grooves or the, the trenches that we need a router in are going to be. This will be the hand area here to here. As you can see there, that's going to mirror where we need to be. Now the hand grip, the the width on either side of the of the shaft of the handle will need to be big enough that their hand, whichever side they go in, can fit in. You don't need to come out this side, uh, the finger side, very far. Just enough that you can curl your fingers around makes a smaller hand or uh, handle hole. So I find that that I've got this little template here. That's about as big as I need to be overall. So now, instead of cutting it all out and moving, removing that entire plug, I'm just going to use my router hit, uh, router bit here, to take out a little bit at a time, take out this channel big enough and deep enough that this goes in there past the flush point of the top of the PVC handle here. So I'm going to start. Well, by first plugging it in. And I'm going to start it just about as deep as I guesstimate the, the depth of those holes are. So bring that in flush. So adjust this down. Now we've got all that channel built in. You can see how well and how far, how much deeper we need to go. Okay, so if you can see, I'm only about halfway deep in this spot. I think, being that, let's see, 
This is going in flush. I think the side uh, troughs are deep enough. We need to bring the center PVC a little deeper so that it goes down to flush and then hollow out the, the middle area here, um, e either using the, the router or a knife. You can do all of this with a, with a uh, steak knife and you know just pull it all out as you go. I'm gonna build this. Deeper. Back up. I'm making sure that my depth doesn't go past the bottom of the of the surface of the shield. sure my mom if she sees this is gonna berate me for not wearing eye protection during that but can figure out what I did with my uh, safety glasses last time and this is only foam so it's not like it's gonna scrap a cornea or anything if I get it so go through and kind of clean up the the inside it still does leave a little rough surface so what you can do there is you can take your heat gun Heat that up, and then you're going to take a piece of flat something, and make sure that the bottom surface underneath your, surf, your shield is fine. But then you're going to take another flat surface, like my template here, lay it down and press.
helped make it a nice flat surface, which if I was going to go through and do a Plasti Dip Shield, I would then skin the inside of this whole area with MC foam. But being that this is going to be a cloth covered shield and the customer's not paying for that extra portion, I'm not going to worry about it. Dang. So anyhow, now it looks like that comes in fairly flush. I need to go just a little bit deeper on the on the PVC portion. which means just slightly a little bit deeper on these troughs. So we'll get all that flush where it all goes in well and get back to you. Okay, so I've gone back through. We've got that routered out. As you can see, there's plenty of room for standard hand to get in there, to grab it, move it back. Now at this point, what you want to do is you want to add whatever kind of handle you're going to do here. You want to make it wider. You want to build it up this direction or whatnot. Wrap it in leather, whatnot. I'm going to go ahead and grip tape this out. And then we're going to attach and anchor this entire piece with zip ties going in above and beyond um, on each area, anchoring the whole handle to the shield. That way, when the entire shield is moving, you can see how we got really thin at the top. That'll still give you a good surface to glue your. Your top skin on. Uh, if you're going to do this as a PD shield, you could just do, you know, one layer of MC skin on the top. But with that anchored in there, anytime you move the handle, as my squires like to tell me, you get immediate response. There isn't any slight lag. I never feel the lag in the strapping tape type, but then again, I wear punch gloves that lock my my handle in, and so my hand is doing that. Um, doing the job of the lateral support, the twisting support that these cross members are going to add. So we'll get to, to that point and I'll show you how to do it. Okay, so one thing to do, um, once these are locked in here, these things aren't really gonna go anywhere. They're, with these channels built in to the foam itself, there isn't any way for them to move sideways. But I would like to make sure that there's a little extra support. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this strapping tape, has the fiberglass strands through it, and super lightweight but super strong. Come in. Take down both sides. And again, this is a really quick tutorial on how to do this, just to get the basic idea out there. Cut me some more straps. I've got that link in. I'm going to give it a quick grip tape handle so he's got a little extra grip. Normally, if I was going to do a leather handle over the top of this, like I do in my other tutorials, I would start with the grip tape so that the DAP has something to really grab onto and bite onto. Uh, when you're doing the dapping on the leather handle. Now, as I put my, my hand through there, I can feel that all that rubbing on that open cell that we did on the bottom, even though I pressed down on it, I'm still getting some soft or some, some sharp edges. So it's kind of like cheese gratering the inside of my 
my hand. So what I've decided to do is I'm going to go ahead and put a piece of really thin MC foam and dap that into, uh, into that section. It'll just make the, the grip along these knuckles a lot nicer. So we'll get to that point. Okay, so I've cut this center piece out of some MC foam. This is the, the skins that I sell. Um, we're going to rough this side up right here with a wire brush. If I can find it, it's not where it's supposed to be. Okay, so we... Oh, actually, I would normally dap that surface, but being that this is going to be the inside of a handle, um, and the MC foam, as you get as it gets heated by itself, may tear. I'm just going to use that side surface, that side on the outside surface here, and we'll dap it down into the center. So we grab our dap. Gloves on just because I hate cleaning dap off of my fingers for the next day or two. side. And then normally you just sit there and wait, but being that we're in a hurry, I'm going to use my Heat gun. Help it along with the drying. Stick that piece down there on the inside. Now, with all that heat, it's got a neat little impression of where my knuckles need to be. Your hand. So now, when that buddy comes in there, slides in really nice, very comfortable. Pick that shield up as it is now. Now, some people say, "Ah, I just glue this in." Ah, that's a bad idea because. Glue will eventually rip out, especially if you're using this for a heavy combat shield. There's a lot of torque being put onto it with red weapons and whatnot. You want to make sure that that's locked into place really well. So we're going to use zip ties. We're going to go in. Now on this side, on this surface, we can just use the rod itself to cinch on. But the other surface, being that we've got all this extra thickness, and this is just foam on the other side, we want something that it's going to be able to grab onto that won't rip through the foam. So that's what we do. We use some scrap leather to cut out plugs. We'll do that next. Okay, so I've cut out six little rectangles of leather. I'm also going to take off the edges using these leather shears. And second thought, you don't need these to be all quite this big. The ones that are going to be on the outside of the main portions, yes. Um, the ones that are going to be coming over the smaller uh, cross-member fiberglass rods won't need to be that big. So I've probably got quite a few extra for the next shield, but let's finish that up. So then what you're going to want to do is go punch two holes into either side. So I'm going to mark how wide this PVC handle is so that I know where my holes need to be. 
and then mark how wide the uh, smaller fiberglass rods are going to be. And now we're going to go use the drill press, punch these out. I'm going to need one for each end of the of the uh, fiberglass rods, and one for each of the uh, PVC. So for the small, do the large, we'll go do that. Okay, so if you can see, got my drill press set up here. This is a, uh, a punch bit available at Harbor Freight. Uh, do is come in and cut the plugs out on each side. Okay, so now what we got to do is um, punch straight through uh, the foam. Normally, just use a screwdriver, line it up to where this will need to be, and put it over the edge of your table. Punch. That gives you holes that your zip tie can go all the way down through. Do that on each one of them all the way around. Now then, I like to take my Sharpie here and come through and mark where each one of those holes was. And then you're going to lay this back down over the top of it. Figure out roughly where they need to be. So we don't want these leather strips. Number one, the leather strips are there to make sure that the zip tie doesn't pull straight through the foam got something to grab onto it gives you more surface area for that zip tie to to uh, grab onto as it has stress put onto it so we put these leather plugs in there to keep this the zip ties just from tearing right straight through but we don't want them to sit up above the surface and have those bumps there so this is where or handy dandy hand router comes into place. We can just make sure that we've got our bit set to the same depth as our as our leather is. We want that surface to be nice and flush. So
you can start threading or zip tie through from the back side here where our hole was. Thread it through. Go in one side or the other, find the opposite hole. Bring it up top. Cinch it down, make it nice and tight, cinches that plug in there nicely. And one side. The other. Down nice tight. Add a different color shield blank and it wouldn't be as stark contrast. We'll do the same for the other side. Okay, so now we've got all of these excess zip ties out here, so we just need to trim those off down as close to the spot as possible, or close to the surface as possible. Try to turn your ends so that they're not sticking up above the, the surface here on the back. And you can see just a little bit of turn in my hand makes that entire thing immediately respond, which is what my squire has been talking about forever. So, yeah, I can now see that when you don't have a glove on, but normally I have a glove. Uh, so, anyway, so now we've got these extra troughs here. So, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to take some MC foam cut strips in there to bring the, the all those troughs flush with the surface and then we're going to throw an 